that set traps might give account to them so that the king would suffer no loss. And then uh, this Daniel distinguished himself above the governors uh, and set traps because an excellent spirit was found in him and the king gave thought to setting him over the whole realm. So the governors and set traps uh, sought to find some charge against Daniel. Okay, so we see here that it pleased Darius, uh, or better known as Cyrus, uh, to uh, set up this administration for himself so that, uh, that if someone uh, was to uh, maybe take something from him as far as like uh, uh, these duties that he had, uh, he didn't want to have to have to rule over everything over himself. So he set it up to where he had three governors. Uh, under him, and then this administration of uh, the 120, uh, they would do all the work for Cyrus or, or Darius. Uh, it says that maybe, uh, maybe the fact that uh, Daniel distinguished himself uh, above all these governors that uh, Cyrus liked him better. Right? Have you ever been in that position where you kind of you got to a job or whatever, and you did, you were doing what you were told, you knew what your objective was, you knew which way the company was wanting to go, and you set your mind to be the best supervisor or maybe the best employee that the company's got. And guess what? Just because you know your job or just because you're doing the best that you can do, someone notices it and says, ah, can't let that happen. And so they set a trap for you, right? Well, this is basically what was going on with uh, Daniel. He, he had uh, uh, pleased the king. He was uh, uh, doing his job uh, and the best that he could do it in all manners. That not only did uh, he do it better than everyone, the king noticed it. Okay? The king noticed it. They said that, uh, that Daniel had a good attitude, right? He had a good attitude. How many of us can say that? We get up every day and go into work that we have a great attitude, right? Uh, so as I was going through here, uh, I noticed that uh, Daniel said that Daniel was close to 80 years old as well. He's close to 80 years old. Go down here to verse 4. It says, So the governors and satraps sought to find some charge against Daniel concerning the kingdom, but they could not find no charge or fault because he was faithful, nor was there any error or fault found in him. Then these men said, We shall not find any charge against uh, this Daniel unless we find it against him concerning the law of his God. So not only was Daniel a good employee or a good governor and looking out for the best interest of the king, it shows that he had, what, a faithful spirit too, a good spirit about him. So he, here he was, 80-something years old. So nine times out of ten, he'd been in politics or been in that type of situation for, what, over 50 years. And so... Just by the way he carried himself, he had been noticed, not only by the king, but by the other satraps and by the other governors, right? And so they decided that they were going to uh, try to find something against him. So they plotted against him to try to find something against him. It says, so the governors and satraps sought to find some charge against him. Daniel concerning the kingdom, but they could not find no charge or fault because he was faithful, nor was there any error or fault found in him. Wow. We know today as politicians, uh, when they go into uh, to do, to become governor or to become uh, a senator or something like that, or to become president, what happens? <clears throat> you have all these people that go and they start digging, right? They want to try to find something against you. And what did these men say? 
It says right here in Scripture, they couldn't find any charge, any charge against Daniel. Can you imagine being in, the, in your 80s, doing your job better than most at that, at that uh, level, having that experience, and then them looking for something and not being able to find anything? It says, Daniel was such a faithful man that those who looked uh, for a flaw in his actions or his character, they did what? They come up in. So they could not find any charge against him. And you know, it's like I said, today's candidates, the nominee for political office is set underneath the, the kind of scrutiny. Uh, it says, uh, in 50 years, they could find nothing wrong. It says, no fraudulent expense accounts, no intern scandals, no questionable business deals, no gifts from lobbyists, no accusations from the staff. Daniel lived a faithful life. Daniel had a spirit about him that showed that he was faithful to the Lord Jesus Christ. So these voters and set traps thrown before the king and said thus to him, King Darius, live forever. All the governors of the kingdom, the administration and set traps, the counselors and advisors had consulted together to establish a royal statute and to make a firm decree that whoever petitions any god or man for 30 days except you, O king, shall be cast into the den of the lions. Now, O king, establish the decree and sign it in writing so that it cannot be changed according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which does not alter. Therefore, King Darius signed the written decree. Kind of seems like King uh, Darius was set up when they, they kind of appeased uh, to uh, the king, didn't they? They said, O king, you know, so we're going to set up this decree that nobody can petition any god but you. Cannot pray to anyone but you. So they kind of set Darius or Cyrus up on the little pedestal there and was like, uh, you know, so this is the way it's going to be. And it's only for 30 days. Right? It's only for 30 days. But they knew that they had done what? They lied. They lied. They had said in the scriptures previously that they were going to set, they were going to, the only way they were going to catch Daniel was uh, by lying to Cyrus. And so they lied and they said all that little three letter word, all of the governors, the satraps, administrators, have all agreed. They didn't all agree. Daniel didn't know anything about it, did he? No, he didn't. And this is some of the stuff that still goes on today. The devil uses people just, I mean, at the very time you open up your eyes, mm -hmm. if he can get on you, he's going to jump on your back and ride you the whole day. These people were beat up by jealousy and beat up by the fact that Daniel was faithful and true. Mm -hmm. So they set out a trap. They knew for the 50 years that he had served, they couldn't find anything. So they set up to trap him. And this is what they did. It says, now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went home. And in his upper room with his windows open toward Jerusalem, he knelt down on his knees three times that day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as was his custom since early days. Notice right here, Daniel didn't change anything, did he? He didn't change anything. He went about his customary prayer life just 
like he was, like nothing had changed. Why? Why? Because he was faithful to the king, but he was more faithful to God. Said that he went home, he went to his upper room, and what, what it means by that is he went to a, pay, a place where he could be alone so he could pray to, to God and give God thanks for everything that was going on in his life. Do we do that? Do we set ourselves apart? We know that in the Bible and Scripture it says that Jesus, before they came and took him away to be crucified, he did what? He separated himself and he went and prayed, right? Do we take that time out of our personal lives to, to set us a, a spot or a place away so that we can have that time alone with Jesus Christ? It said that he knelt down three times daily. A daily prayer life. Not once a month. Not just when it feels good or when everything's going well. He was faithful to his prayer life. He didn't pray anymore and he didn't pray any less. And why did he pray with his door, I mean with his windows open towards Jerusalem? Because that's where that's where the temple was at that time. And although he couldn't, you know, there was no sacrifices or anything like that made, he had his windows open so he could pray towards Jerusalem. They lied. But never, nothing changed in Daniel. He went about his daily life. He went home just like normal. He went up to his upper room. I'm sure he got something to eat. He went, gave thanks for that. He went up, he went up to his uh, upper room and he got down on his knees and he prayed. Darius was deceived. He signed the decree. Says Daniel didn't let the decree change his actions one way or another. It says there was danger in both directions, but he would much rather compromise his life with the king than compromise his life with God. We got to, we have to obey the laws and rules and regulations set forth on on this earth by our government. But guess what? God is over all that. Amen. Amen. We see that nothing's changed here. Daniel knew that. In his day, it was the same way. He knew that. He was not going to change. Remembering the place of sacrifice, even when there was no sacrifice to be given, he got down on his knees and he prayed. According to the scriptures, it says he knelt down on his knees praying as Jesus did. Jesus uh, got down on his knees and prayed. Stephen got down on his knees and prayed. Paul got down on his knees and prayed. Luke got down on his knees and prayed. But we got to remember that Daniel was a governor, right? Daniel was a governor. And still had time to get down on his knees and pray three times daily. If you think that your life and the things that you got going on in your life right now were more than what Daniel had going on in his life right now. Daniel was a governor. He was over a whole territory. 
And then not only that, the king was pleased so much by his work ethic and the, and the way he carried himself that he was thinking about putting him over everything. But he still had time to give thanks to the Lord Jesus Christ for everything God put in his life. For all the trials and tribulations for over 50 years. He had time. Nowadays, the pews are getting to where they're emptier and emptier. People don't want to come to church. God gives us every minute or every second of every minute of every hour of every day. And some people can't give Him one hour on the weekend. But Daniel saw the importance of a daily prayer life. Even though he had been put in a position to where he was over all this stuff and had all this stuff going on in his life, he still made time. We have to make time. You have to make time to get into the Bible. You just can't sit up there on that on that dresser or just can't sit up on that shelf or can't sit up on that dash of car or over in the seat covered up by a jacket. You got to read it. You got to be in it. It says, He prayed and gave thanks because great prayer is filled with thanksgiving. Prayer and praise should always go up to heaven arm in arm. We see here, as we continue on, that uh, they found Daniel praying and making supplication before the Lord. And so they brought him before them. They brought him before Cyrus. And because Cyrus had signed that decree, or Darius had signed that decree, he could not change it. Because back in those days, when the king was most of the time seen as a God, it was like it showed that Darius Darius said that he was really displeased with himself whenever he heard this because he knew he had messed up. And he knew that he couldn't undo it because the Medes and the Persians, once they signed something, that they couldn't undo it. It was almost like a God had done it. But we see that in, in verse 18 it says, Now the king went to his place, uh, uh, palace, and spent the night fasting, and no musicians were brought to him before him. <coughs> Excuse me. Also he slept, uh, also his sleep went from him. Then the king arose very early in the morning and went down to the lion's den to see if Daniel was there and alive. Daniel had, I mean, uh, the king had placed him in there, but right before he placed him in there, uh, Darius told Daniel, your king, your God will protect you. I bet you 10 to 1 that Daniel slept better than Cyrus did. Why? Because Daniel was faithful. He was faithful to the Lord Jesus Christ. God protected him. God gave him a good prayer life. God gave him a good job. God gave him all these many things that he was thankful for. And he, he showed it by giving thanks to the Lord Jesus Christ. Every day. Every day. Not only by his actions, but by his prayer life. said that uh, the king arose very early in the morning and went out uh, in haste to the den of the lions. And when he came to the den, he cried out with a lamenting voice to Daniel, which means a saddened voice. Okay? 
The king spoke, saying to Daniel, Daniel, servant of the living God. And notice he said, of the living God. Has your God, whom you serve continually, bam, right there. Even the king knew that Daniel served God continually. Amen. Been able to deliver you from the lions. And then Daniel said to the king, O oh, king, live forever. My God sent his angel to shut the lion's mouth so that they did not have, have, so they have not hurt me because I was found innocent before him. And also, O oh, king, I have done no wrong before you. Now the king was exceedingly glad for him and commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den and no injury, whatever, was found on him because he believed in his God. Amen. Amen. Daniel said to the king, God has sent an angel to shut the lion's mouth. What a testimony for Lord Jesus Christ. What a testimony right there. That God can do whatever He pleases to do. His will is just. Notice that it said that Darius was pleased, exceedingly pleased. Then King Darius, um, take up there 25, says, Then King Darius wrote to all the peoples, nations, and languages that dwell in all the earth, Peace be multiplied to you. I make a decree that in every dominion of my kingdom, <clears throat> men must tremble and fear before the God of Daniel. For he is the living God and stand fast forever. His kingdom is the one which shall not be destroyed, and his dominion shall endure to the end. He delivers and rescues. He works signs and wonders in heaven and on earth. Who has delivered Daniel from the power of the lions? So this Daniel prospered in the reign of Darius and in the reign of Cyrus the Persian. Notice right there where he says, I make a decree that in every dominion of my kingdom men must tremble and fear before the God of Daniel. For he is the living God and stand fast forever. His kingdom is the one which shall not be destroyed. And his dominion shall endure to the end. He delivers and rescues. So if you're out there right now and you need to be delivered or rescued, guess what? God can do it. Amen. God can do it. There's nothing that He can't do. His dominion shall endure to the end. He says what? To those that call upon His name, they shall live in heaven, shall be saved, right? Eternity in heaven. All that call upon his name. Daniel had a good prayer life. Daniel gave thanks to the Lord Jesus Christ for everything that he had. Good times and bad times. Remember, it's the bad times also that we go through that make us who we are. It's how God gets us from point A to point B. Hebrews 13, 8. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's not going to change. We change. That's right. Today, I just talked about the story of Daniel. How he was thrown into the lion's den. How he was doing everything right. And those that opposed him set a trap for him. But God delivered him. God will deliver you. All you have to do is lay it at His feet. If 
you're dealing with anxiety, if you're dealing with depression, or if you're dealing with uh, money problems, or if you're dealing, lay it at his feet. Lay it at his feet. He can handle it. You don't have to, you don't have to bear that cross by yourself. Brother Ralph is going to come up here. We're going to have an a invitation, a, a song of invitation. And uh, if you are here today and need someone to pray with you or pray for you, <coughs> I would be happy to do so. Uh, for those of you that are watching this via uh, the internet, remember, there's not a task that is too hard for the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have to have to reach down and step on that thing called pride. Ask Him for help. Lay your, lay your problems at the feet of, uh, of Christ and He will take you. He will take them away. Brother Ralph, we're going to be 407, because He lives. This can be good. Again, you guys come down here if you need to. The altars are open. We'll pray. God send His Son.